buddy. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. This is Tom McPhee. Um, we're doing uh, an American Strays canine survey this morning here in Houston, around the east side, um, running both sides of Lockwood. Um, you're going to see a lot of dogs um, in this uh, video. Um, young dogs, old dogs, running in the street, laying in the street, and, uh, and puppies that um, can get out of their space and just go out into um, the neighborhood and that's kind of the point for these videos is to um, really be aware of everything that's taking place on the street all of the different rescues and the uh, humane societies in town are pretty full and there's a, a whole host of rescues all throughout Houston hundreds of independent rescuers and everybody is still kind of maxed out a lot of the dogs that we're going to see um, are not fixed. What are you doing? Hey. Hey. He's like, man, I was totally fine until you got here. But this guy, that's a mama. It's a girl. Yeah. She is, uh, she's just kind of sitting around. Oh, baby. Oh. Huh? I began my research into stray dogs that were living on the street. I didn't know what I would find. I didn't think I would find this. This place needs to be shut down. There are viruses in there. Uh, the so-called animal shelters, humane society, anti-cruelty, animal control, they kill at least 85% of the dogs. The fact of the matter is people are suffering and there was equipment and trained personnel that could help. While I'm doing one surgery, 10 animals, dogs, were marched in and killed right in front of me and I had no idea. Try to catch me howling at the moon. been in the same spot for months. Ah, the dog looked like he was dead. Kind of like, well, it's always been this way and we accept it. Hope they won't see me down soon. We usually drop our warrants off in the sacks. We need to work together. We are coming on the air for breaking news. Hurricane Harvey at the Category 4 storm thousands flee the path of destruction. Preparedness is an afterthought. At Houston SPCA, we've asked them to respond to our leadership. Once they were rescued, there wasn't a plan of where they should go. They gave me the runaround and the runaround. You don't know if it was taken off of her. You should just be happy that you got your No, I had to go to hell and high water to get her. We're, we're going to ask you to leave, okay? Okay? Yeah. He was there. When the sun rises. Go through and you get the ones that have been there the longest and you get the ones that are sick. The old ones missing some teeth. and The city is the one that's doing the killing. The only reason they're dying is they're homeless. The Department of Agriculture needs to get out here and see what the fuck is going on here. Did we get all the dogs out that we needed to get out? The community doesn't want us to kill homeless pets. It is much simpler to kill them than to fix them up and find them another home. There will be a time in history that we look back on this time in history and we will be considered insane. What 
doing? Oh my god. What are you doing? Get back in there. He's going to run after us. Just saw a puppy with the purple on its back. Um, don't know what that's about, but that puppy can come and go, and and uh, I see, you know, that could be a real awful situation because that puppy is only just a few weeks old, um, cute as can be. But stay tuned. Um, weigh in on what you're seeing. Uh, share your comments and thoughts about this. Um, however, the one thing that you have to know is n these dogs just can't be picked up. We can't be picking dogs up off the street. We can't be stealing dogs. You know, we don't know who these dogs belong to. Obviously, um, people are letting them roam free, and, and I'm sure everybody's like, well, somebody should be responsible and take those dogs. I totally get that. But there is a process to this, and, and our process right here is to identify um, the extent of the crisis and the problems here in Houston. So bear with us and uh, take a look at what's going on and stay tuned to Stray Dog City as we uh, unfold this story here. Hello everybody, we have merch! Woo! I'm a person. I definitely support changes that need to be done for the animals. I'm against the chaining of animals. I'm for uh, making an ordinance against it. I'm for making an ordinance against selling uh, breeded animals. All right. And I'm for making uh, harsher penalties for those that are harming animals. Today's October 6th. And we're outside NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Cuts for Mutts has organized a very large, peaceful protest um, trying to raise awareness regarding the chain dogs, the stray dogs, um, even own dogs that are not being well cared for or properly cared for in Houston. I think probably almost 200 people have come out for this. I would say the better part of 200 people. Everybody donned in their pink shirts with their Houston Shine Your Light and Torture. Um, they did a long walk down here to be right in front of Energy Stadium because there's a Texans game today. So they've got a crowd of traffic going by. 
um, the signs, they're getting some honks uh, from cars. I think further down, the traffic is stopped and they're trying to pass out some pamphlets to people just to create awareness of the situation. And with an election coming up, trying to actually get elected officials in that are interested in this big problem that Houston has. <laughs> and I am running for Houston City Council District K and it's Kim for K and I am opposed to chaining the animals, the dogs and uh, I think that there needs to be an increased awareness of uh, the treatment of the animals, the dogs, cats and they need to be loved, they need to be cared for, they need to be nurtured and so we need to make some changes as far as regulation for the, for the animals. My little one, my little one, you know all this? This is a picture. I said to myself, this is their event, I want, you know, I want them to be here. <laughs> this is their event, isn't it? Yes. It's all for them. Yes. I lost myself. I waited still. For a glimmer to arrive. I know it. Sunday morning, the 25th of January. Uh, we're in Houston, just off 45. We're gonna do a track.
You're a good looking guy. going on pal boy I like your face you got an interesting face do you like hanging out just in the front there is that your spot <laughs> look at that face and they're like straight ahead hey what are you doing What are you doing? Huh? <laughs> Another beautiful... Uh, Lots of shepherds this morning. Yeah, this is the shepherd area. You're a good looking pal. Where's your collar? You look pretty young. You look really young. It's another young dog. Oh, this one looks a little hungry though. You a little hungry? He's like, hey, bud, check's up, man. Something's coming. There's three. Oh, boy, aren't you pretty? Yeah. You're pretty.
We haven't seen you before, have we? We haven't seen you. You look familiar, though. So this guy does not have any collar. Oh, he's pretty young too. Hi buddy, what's going on? Yeah, he's got a collar, he's coming to visit his buddies over there. But everybody is like a target, you know? Fox tonight. How many stray and homeless dogs are there in the Houston area, and how can the dog crisis plaguing some communities be resolved? Well, tonight a nonprofit group is back in town looking for answers. Fox 26's Randy Wallace joining us live tonight from downtown with this exclusive. Randy. Jonathan, the nonprofit group is called World Animal Awareness Society. They were here back in 2015 and arrived again just this past weekend. Group members say they will be here through August the 24th, literally counting stray and homeless dogs. Look, we're in a town that is built with rocket scientists. <laughs> Stray dogs aren't rocket science, so we should fix this. We got our baseline data. With Tom McPhee with the World Animal Awareness Society is in Houston doing something that's never been done before. Meticulously count the number of stray and homeless dogs here. Truly identify what those numbers are, where the hot spots are. Numbers have been bantered around for years, but this is the first time so much effort has been spent on counting strays in our city. Thank you, buddy. Hi, 
Bye, buddy. Hey buddy. Mom and Pop. What are you doing? You got a big old tree? Did you get a big old tree? Okay, good.
right, pal. He'll take one to his pen. Hi, would you like a treat? Hi, buddy.
Help save a life today. Your donation will send the World Animal Awareness Society team on our next mission. From all of us here at the World Animal Awareness Society and WA2S Films, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. The last time I was here, two weeks ago, we were speaking on the issues surrounding bark, refusing to immediately accept stray animals brought into the shelter. The feedback we received from all of you seemed to be that you agreed. If someone finds an animal on the side of the road, they should be able to turn that animal into the shelter. Saturday is particularly important because it's the day most people are off of work. Keep in mind that there's already two days of the week that the shelter is not accepting animals. But Saturdays, I mean, when could you take an animal? If you have an animal, you find a dog on the side of the road, you put them in your garage or in your spare bedroom, Saturday is going to be the day you're going to be able to take them to the shelter. Well, you can't even take them there to get vaccinated on Saturday, so you can hold them for another week. You can't, after you've held them for a week, you can't bring them back on Saturday. So when I was here last time, Mayor Turner, you responded that this deferred intake policy was in order to control disease. However, in the most recent statement released by BARC, they're stating intake is now closed on Saturdays due to, and I quote, Recent budget cuts from the city of Houston. So, I'm not done, please. So what's the deal? Are they controlling disease? Are they, has funding been cut in the past two weeks? Or are they simply trying to not do their job as a taxpayer funded animal shelter? Can anyone please shine some light on how this issue has managed to get worse, not better since the last time we were here? I think it's a combination of both. One, the initial reason why they put a um, a, a, a limit on it was uh, because of distemper, and it was uh, the problem was infecting all of the animals in the <laughs> in the shelter, and what we were advised was that the best way to protect all of the animals in the shelter was to have them uh, um, get the necessary shots before, mm -hmm. and then keep them away for that limited period of time. And then that way, all of the animals would be pro be protected. Mm -hmm. So that was problem the problem. Is that this is something that every shelter across the entire U.S. deals with. Mm -hmm. Every every shelter in the entire U.S. and across the world deals with distemper, parvovirus, kennel cough. I mean, this mm -hmm. is not some sort of like, oh, we only have this in Houston. And other shelters find a way to deal with that. And I'm not saying don't ask people to take home that animal for one week. Some people will be able to take that animal home for one week. But the difference between, uh, so whenever we finished speaking last time, one of the BARC representatives cornered us in the hallway and asked us, and they said, well, this is a program that's implemented in many shelters. The difference between a past program, a positive alternative to shelter surrender program, and what BARC is implementing right now, is a past program is for an owned animal that the family can no longer keep. So you're asking people to take home their own animal for one week, or maybe an animal they bring on the side of the road, but that's going to be less common. The issue with Bark mm. is that they are, it, it's a dog you know nothing about. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I get, one reason was because of distemper, and the other reason is because of budgetary concerns. You realize, though, that by mm. turning people away that can't hold an animal, you're putting that animal at risk of ending up back on the streets I unaltered. I understand. So our problem is going to continue to get bigger. And I agree with you, and it is going to get bigger. Dad, I hear you recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. 
And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, Em, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool, I like animals. How did you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey dad, nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. <laughs>